Tiffany of The Sewing Blog, Tip Stitched, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In my very first YouTube video, The Seamstress Tagged, I asked you guys to let me know what types of videos you'd like to see in the future, and one of the video, or one of the suggestions was a monthly recap video. So in this video, I'm going to do that, but a little different. I didn't sew a lot in September because uh, I had a lot going on. Um, and so I'm going to do a quarterly recap, which is really what I typically do on my blog anyway. So this video is going to be for the whole third quarter of 2017. Now I say the whole third quarter, but I really don't think I had any sewing projects on my blog for the month of July. And that's because it's just a hectic month for me personally. Um, I have a lot going on that month and I took a well-deserved break from sewing that month. Um, so we'll start with what I made in August through September for this video. So my very first make uh, for August was the McCall 6886 and I made this using a stretch dashiki fabric that I ordered um, from a Facebook group. Um, I really love the way this dress turned out. I love this type of stretch dashiki fabric. I love dashiki and African prints and Ankara and Angola. But I don't typically work with wovens, I just prefer knit. So this stretch dashiki fabric, which is really a lot like an ITY, um, is wonderful for me. The unfortunate thing is I ordered this fabric, like I said, from a group online on Facebook called African Prince Overload, and they are terrible to work with. I hate to say that because I'd like to support them, um, but it's not just me. Other people told me they had the same issues with them. Um, they're very slow to ship. You never know when your order is actually going to come. Um, they actually, when I first purchased this fabric, I was told that one panel was enough to make one dress and I actually needed two panels to make one dress. The panels were smaller than I thought they were. Um, we had a lot of back and forth, so I'm not pleased at all with that company, but as far as I know, they're one of the few people who can get their hands on this stretch dashiki fabric if they still have any because I bought this quite a while ago. Um, I haven't been able to find anything else quite like it except for from one uh, Etsy seller which is Tambu Collection. I'll link to that in the description. Theirs is similar but a little different and they only have it in one colorway whereas African Print Overload had it in four. A cream that I've used previously, the blue denim that I used for this one. Uh, I think there was a black and red and also like a black and blue or something like that. But again, if you want to order for them, go ahead. Just take your chances and hope that you don't have a place where you want to wear this piece because there's no telling when it's actually going to ship to you. Um, but this again is McCall 6886, which most of us are familiar with. It's a really simple dress to make. I just made a front and a back out of each of the two panels that I ordered to make the dress. I also lined this dress because this fabric is not totally opaque. Um, so I lined it with a white ITY. And the way I did that was of course just cut a front and back of the lining print as well. I did cut it a little bit shorter so that it wouldn't slip out and show from underneath the finished, the outside fabric. So about two or three inches shorter. I think I made this dress using view D and so I used the view C length to make the lining. Um, and so what I do from this is just sew the shoulders together from the lining and the main fabric. Then with right size facing, I sew the neckline of the dress together, then turn the whole thing right side out. From there, I simply fold in, inward, the lining and the, I don't know how I think this is going to help, the lining and the main fabric, so it, the 5 eighths of an inch, so it butts up together, and then I zigzag along um, the armhole and then I just fold under and hem the bottom and you're done. It's a quick easy dress but it's cute because the fabric really speaks for the dress which is why M886 is a great pattern because really your fabric does all the work with this one. But you can also make it really cute with solids which I've done as well but okay. So the next one that I have up that I made that I'm really really proud of is the Riwi swimsuit. It's a plunging v-neck uh, one-piece swimsuit that I made using the pattern from So So Deaf from Mimi G. I think this was from the June issue of the So So Deaf magazine. Um, this was actually fairly simple. I have attempted um, swimsuits in the past and didn't have as much success. I was also a much newer 
beginner sewer at the time. So trying these a few years later, having more experience with knits and elastic and so forth, made this process much easier. I do think the instructions were also really good. So if you go back to So So Deaf and purchase that June magazine, you get this as well as a men's boy short pattern for free with the purchase of the magazine. So that's a plus. Um, I was really happy with this one. Like I said, I think I only wore it to the pool for these photos because I sold it really late in the summer. Again, it was August, but, um, I do really like the way it turned out and I have plans for a couple more in the future, including one out of a leopard print, which I think will be really hot. Um, next up I had Vogue 9253. First of all, I'd like to say, I think everyone made this pattern as well. They should have because this fabric, I mean, this pattern is gorgeous. You could modify it for those of you who had a problem or an issue with showing all the goods with the with the plunging v-neck, but um, I don't have that problem. So I made the dress is is out of an ITY fabric um, that I purchased from Fabric Mark. It was actually my guest my monthly guest post for August for the Fabric Mark uh, Fabricista blog. Um, I worn this out a couple of times and I get pat, uh, compliments on it whenever I wear it out. My husband loves this dress, so that's always a plus. Um, I did make a couple of adjustments since I made this out of an ITY as the pattern is designed for wovens. Um, and that was the weight of the ITY was quite heavy. So I actually added an elasticized waistband, um, partially also because the V-neck, though it is supposed to be plunging, was a little low even for me. So by sewing a one inch elastic casing, I brought the v-neck up one more inch for a little less cleavage as well as it made more support for the heavier ITY um, skirt. But if you made it out of a woven, of course that's beautiful as well. I've seen several people do it. Um, making it with the knit, I also was able to eliminate the zipper in the back since obviously I could just pull it over my head. Um, did I make any other change with that one? Oh, the big issue I had with that one was I was already squeezing the dress out of less fabric than was recommended by the pattern, but I get really creative with that sometimes. And as busy as this pattern was, it this fabric pattern print was, it didn't matter so much if things lined up so I could get more creative with uh, cutting out the pieces. So the one thing that I did do after cutting out the biggest pieces first, which is what I typically do, which was the skirt, I was trying to get the bodice back because it was cut uh, on the fold or I cut it on the fold because I eliminated the zipper. Um, I le was left with the bodice pieces. Now it's a wrap. So there's a piece that goes this way and then there's another piece that goes this way. In my haste of cutting it out, I cut both pattern pieces, bodice pieces, going the same way. I forgot to flip the pattern piece. So I had two lefts and not a right or vice versa. I can't remember. So what I had to do is go dig out the scraps for that fabric and mend together two pieces of fabric to make the one bodice piece. Now, thankfully, again, the bodice uh, or the, the print of the fabric was really busy, so you couldn't exactly tell that's what I did. But if you look very closely, even in the photo, you can see on one side there's more of a vertical pattern and on the other side there's more of a horizontal like pattern. Uh, way of the pattern and that's because that's what I had to do to make that work because again that was my guest blog for fabric mark and I had to make that fabric work but overall I'm really pleased with it unless you're another seamstress I doubt many people notice that I made that boo-boo again thankfully with the busy fabric okay um next up is new look 6301 I really really love this pattern I have an affinity for wrap dresses as you can see today even I have on a wrap shirt I love all things that wrap so um in the past i think my favorite wrap bodice pattern like faux wrap not a real wrap dress had been butterick's 5950 which is an older pattern i think it may be out of print now um, but it had side pleats and a cute little skirt and i do really still like that pattern but it's fully lined so it takes a few more steps this pattern just has fold over hems for the neckline so you don't need to line it although obviously you could um, but this was a really quick so I love it. New look 6301. I made it out of the same black and white leaf ITY that I used for the Vogue pattern. I can't remember the number off the top of my head. I'll put it in the comments. Um, but I made that dress as well earlier in the summer, that cold shoulder Vogue pattern. Um, it was really cute. And I had a little bit of that fabric left over. 
and I wasn't sure how the sizing would work on this new look. So I went ahead and used that sort of remnant of fabric I had from the bigger piece from making the Vogue dress. But it turned out great and I really love it and I definitely will be making it again in heavier knits like a Ponzi probably or a scuba in the future for fall and um, winter. Um, the next thing that I made was McCall 7046 and I loved this dress and by the reaction that I got from a lot of my Instagram followers you guys love this dress too. Um, it is a cute little flouncy dress perfect for summer that had a double flounce on the bottom and ruching in the middle. I love ruching on a dress because it covers or camouflages a little bit that little tummy bulge that some of us have. I, I for sure have it. Um, so the ruching sort of distracts from that. That plus this more bright, vivid, busy floral print uh, can be really deceiving. Um, and so that that's great. But I love this dress. It's fun. It's cute. I wore it out for a date night. Again, my hubby loved it. So um, I'm really happy with the way this dress turned out. It's also an incredibly quick sew because you just have a front and a back and then the two peplum pieces. The most tedious or time consuming part of the whole dressmaking process for this one is hemming those two peplums. But if you made it out of a scuba or maybe a Liverpool or some other type of knit, you could probably just cut that really evenly raw with your scissors or a rotary cutter and just go. You wouldn't really even need to hem it. Um, the gathering at the waist is done with um, elastic in the seam allowance so you don't actually have to base and gather that part either. So again, a really quick dress. I have plans to make this again in the winter. I'm feeling a velvet with the long sleeves will be really fun and a great dress for like a holiday party. So we'll see if I get around to doing that. Um, I also do some pattern testing. So one of the pattern testings that I did this quarter was for Mod Kid, who I've tested for before. And for this one, they had a girl's pattern with a re uh, removable crop top. So you sort of got two looks in one, which is always a fave of mine, whether that's reversible or these two pieces working together. So you can wear it with the crop top or your little girl can wear it with the crop top that matches the skirt of the dress. Or you could ditch it and just wear the dress that has a knit bodice with a gathered woven skirt. Um, this is super cute. I could also see making this crop top reversible, which I talk about in my blog post, um, because it does have facings. I actually think it would be easier just to make it reversible, to be honest with you. So you could get three looks in one instead of just two. So uh, I can't say enough about this pattern. It's super cute. Go on over to my blog to get more information on it. Um, if you're interested in pattern testing too, let me just insert this in here. I'll give a, a plug out to sewing portfolios. Um, it's a great website, even if you don't want a pattern test, where especially if you don't blog, you can keep all your previous sewing projects together in one space. If you are a pattern tester, it comes in really handy because the next time you see a pattern call, a testing call, you just send them that link, your sewing portfolios link. They are able to take a look at it and they can scan through the previous types of projects you've sewn. With this information, they can make a better decision about what about if they want to choose you as one of their pattern testers because they can evaluate sort of your sewing skills your sewing levels and you can really pitch yourself uh well there so head on over to sewingportfolios.com to learn more about that i'll link it in the description um i also did another little flurry dress which was simplicity 8264 this was also a fabric mart guest post so this fabric was from fabric mart it is a denim with a printed rose florally like print on it. Uh, this denim actually had no stretch, but which I typically don't work with. But this simplicity pattern didn't call for a stretch fabric. It called for a woven such as a brocade or a damask or a denim. So this fabric ended up being great for it. I actually really loved the flirty details with the high neck and the end of the little half sleeves on this dress. Um, I haven't worn this one out yet because it is a medium weight denim and it's pretty hot and I live in Georgia and it's still hot. So once the temps cools down, I'll definitely be wearing this out with some cute little heels or some cute little booties. But I ended up really loving this dress. The only alteration that I remember making with this was taking it in a tad bit at the waist because it's designed to be a shift dress and more straight up and down and I just need a little bit more definition in the waist area. So for that, I actually only ended up taking it in at the sides 
where I felt it was necessary. Had I had more time, I probably would have tried to put two back darts in, um, so the hourglass darts, so that it would bring it in just in the back, but the side taking in actually worked fine. So that was that. So I have a couple more. Um, another tester pattern that I did was Susanna's uh, Anna dress. I actually made this dress again for my uh, mini me, Miss Socialite, because she loves dresses. She also really loves chevron print. Um, and this dress had a couple of options. One was a bodice with a skirt so you could do more of a color blocking. But because Miss Socialite loves patterns, loves black and white, and loves boldness, she wanted the whole dress to be chevron and I appeased her. So instead of doing the black bodice with just the chevron skirt, we went ahead and did an all over chevron dress, which to her credit, I ended up really liking. I think it's super cute. And um, she liked it with the long sleeves. She can definitely wear it as the temperatures start to cool with tights, black tights and cute little black boots or something. So that ended up being a really great dress. Again, if you're interested in pattern testing, go to sewingportfolios.com, learn some more. That's how I created that contact. Another dress that I ended up really loving, you guys already know, I sew tons and tons of dresses, that I ended up loving was McCall 7538. Now this is a pattern that I had in my stash for quite a while and I knew I wanted to color block with it, but I couldn't decide what colors, or if I wanted to do a pattern and a solid, if I wanted to just do stripes and depending on how I cut the pieces make the contrast, I just couldn't decide. I kept going back and forth. So eventually I decided that I would just use some leftover remnant fabric, the black and white sort of leaf fabric. It wasn't really a leaf, um, more like a trellis, I don't know. Some black and white ITY I had in my stash for a while, I decided to use it. I thought I had just enough to make up that dress and use black solid sort of lycra jersey for the midriff crisscross portion. That was essential because I really think black, especially in the middle, is very slimming. Um, so I thought that combination would work really well together and I feel that it did. Um, the one boo-boo I made with this dress was again not laying out all of my pattern pieces correctly. So the issue this time was I put together multiple views. I used view D, the neckline and the skirt, right? But I used view C which had the color blocking and I made the whole thing sleeveless instead of the half sleeves that were on the pattern. So I couldn't really follow, follow any of the pattern views in the instructions because I wasn't really making a straight view A, B, C, R, D for this dress. So in my rush to sort of lay that out and not sort of laying everything out strategically, I always cut out the biggest pieces first, so the skirt. So I cut out the skirt and the midriff portions for the lycra black uh, for the midriff and then I went back to cut out the bodice. Well, when I got to the bodice pieces, I didn't have enough fabric to cut the front and the back bodice on the fold because I didn't have any place to fold the fabric. I did have enough fabric laid flat if you cut two. So what I ended up doing was adding that half inch of seam allowance to the front and back, center front and center back, and cutting out two pieces, then going to my machine and cutting one piece, which would be like the bodice piece on the front, I mean on the fold, for the front and the back. So that's how I got around that one. Again, thankfully, my pattern was, my print on my fabric was busy enough that I don't think it's really noticeable and I kept everything pretty much vertical. So everything still sort of lines up correctly. So you'd have to look pretty close to be this, able to see that seam I have down the center in that dress. But I did end up really liking the dress and these photos is not hemmed. I've debated whether or not I'm gonna go back and hem it or not. I've already worn it a couple of times unhemmed, so I don't really mind unhemmed knit, so it may stay like that. I may hem it. This is another dress I think I'll make out of a heavier knit for the fall and winter, so like a ponte or a double knit, um, a wool knit. I think this would be a cute dress with the longer sleeves, the three quarter or the full sleeves to wear in the winter months, or at least the fall months with tights. Um, so the last three things that I made in this quarter were for the Sewing Bee Challenge or contest on Pattern Review. If you don't follow PatternReview.com, you should. It's a great place to go to check out information about patterns before you start sewing them. Um, especially if it's a popular pattern because you can get tons of feedback from all other sewists from all around the world. So they also hold monthly contests, but once a year they hold, or I think this is the third or fourth year that they've held this sewing bee contest. And this one's a little bit different from the other contests that they typically hold. 
With this one, it's sort of like a spelling bee. Everybody's allowed to participate in the beginning. And from that round, they take it down to about half. And then the next round, they take it down to about another half. And then the final round, round four, they bring it down to 10 or so. And after that, they announce the winner for the whole challenge. So I've wanted to participate in the past, but I've always put it off or missed the deadline or it started sooner than I thought. So this year, though I still saw the information really late, I decided to jump in. And by late, I mean the day before. I decided that I would go ahead and enter this contest. So obviously I had to use something that was in my stash. And the guidelines for round one was to, to sew a pencil skirt based on a piece of music well, inspired by a piece of music or your favorite musician. Well, if you know me, you know I love Beyonce. And so it was a no-brainer that if I was going to use a musician, it was going to be her. Or Rihanna, who has great fashion sense. But again, I was working with what I had in my stash. So um, Beyonce went through a phase where she wore a lot of black and gold. It was very regal, very Creole, very New Orleans, very, I don't know. But she wore a lot of black and gold for a while. And I had this black and gold, really more like a tan fabric knit in my stash for years. Um, I don't even remember where I bought it. I think it was Hancock flat fold section and it was only one yard of fabric. So about the only thing you could do with that piece of fabric was make a pencil skirt anyway. So it just made sense to go ahead and use it for this contest. Uh, it was very similar to a mermaid fitted dress that Beyonce wore, I think to a birthday party. Maybe it was a New Year's party. I can't remember. It was somewhere all in the Google images. Um, and so I made this pencil skirt to sort of mimic that look. Again, it was simply inspired by. I didn't want to go out. She wears plenty of pencil skirts and copy of pencil skirts that she worn in the past. I wanted to make something that looked more just inspired by her look and that was it. So thankfully I made it through round one to round two and the round two challenge was sleeves because 2017 has been the year of dramatic sleeves. We all know it. We've seen so many patterns so many um, celebrities wearing these big dramatic different sleeves. So that was the challenge for round two. Now in round two I thought about pulling out of the competition mainly because my grandmother had passed during that time um, and I just didn't think I was going to have the time to travel out of town and attend the funeral and also get this look in because you only have about seven or eight days in between each round of the sewing bee contest. So I sort of made up my mind that I was going to pull out, but when I looked in my closet, I realized I actually didn't have an all black dress to wear to the funeral. I had black and white, I had black and gray, I had color block black, but no all black, which is what I felt like I needed to wear. So once I decided that it would probably be quicker for me to sew a new black dress than it would be to go out and find a new black dress, I just decided to go ahead and incorporate the sleeves into the black dress that I was wearing, uh, unfortunately, to the funeral. So. Um, what I decided to do was do a simple dress because again I was short on time and pull out McCall 6886. See that's twice already just this quarter I whipped that dress. You've got to get it if you don't have it. So um, I put that together but I needed something dramatic for the sleeve. So I added the sleeves from McCall's hit uh, pattern from this summer which was McCall 7542 that had like the four or five different sleeves. The pleated, the bell, the trumpet, the, so the tulip sleeve. Um, and I used the high-low trumpet sleeve from that view and merged it with McCall 6886 to make a dramatic sleeved black dress. And that's what I ended up wearing and entering into the competition. So thankfully that got me through to round three, which was the reversible challenge. And in this particular round, whatever item you made had to be reversible. Didn't matter if it was a top, a skirt, pants, or whatever. And I had a ton of ideas because I love reversible pieces. Again, I love having things that are two in one. Oop, two in one. And um, I decided that I would go with a bomber jacket because I had one on my to-do list to sew anyway. And I felt like why sew something for the contest that isn't something I would want to wear anyway. So I went ahead and made that bomber jacket. I had been dreaming since last year about an Angola print bomber jacket so I knew that was going to be one side the question was what was going to be the reverse side and I thought about doing velvet I thought about doing a quilted look I thought about doing denim because I thought that would be sort of hot I thought about just doing all black I thought about a couple of things but in the end I decided to use satin which is not like me because satin is slippery and I typically don't like working with it but there aren't many seams in a bomber jacket just the side seams and the sleeves so 
it's pretty straightforward. So I went ahead and decided to do satin. And instead of doing all one color, I went for the black and white sort of classic varsity jacket look. Um, I also used Simplicity 8418 and that allowed me to put the detail of the piping down the sleeve which I really ended up liking so I have a white sleeve with that black piping down the side. I also found some reversible ribbing at my local fabric store that's black and white on one side and white and black on the other. They just totally pulled together the black and white look that I was going for on both sides of the jacket. Um, I used a reversible zipper obviously that was really the main change from the pattern because the pattern itself really makes the jacket reversible anyway because it is fully lined and the way they tell you to line it is actually a really clean finish so there's no exposed seam so you don't really even have to work at making the jacket reversible. Um, I also ended up adding a rose patch. Now I debated the patch back and forth for a while because I thought it gave it more of that varsity look you know you usually have the team logo or the team mascot or something on that uh, chest piece on one side but I didn't really want to go that route at first but I stumbled upon this rose applique no lie at TJ Maxx of all places and once I saw that at TJ Maxx I was like yeah I need to add it on to the jacket um I was still a little unsure so I put it out to Instagram and all of my great Instagram followers were like yes with 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 I think only two of like 30 something comments said without so Sorry to the other person who thought without, but I went ahead and put the patch on, so I really loved it. Unfortunately, I didn't make it to round four of the sewing bead, but it doesn't matter. I really ended up loving my jacket. I think it had a little bit to do with three or four of us all made a reversible bomber, so it wasn't necessarily the most unique idea. But it was a piece I wanted anyway, and it gave me two looks for one, and I'm still really happy with it. So I'm just happy that I made it that far, and I'll try again next year. Um, but yeah, this is everything that I made for this third quarter of 2017. Um, I think that's a total of like 12 looks, so that's not too shabby considering that one month I didn't sew anything at all. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. I'll try to do these monthly, but honestly, it may be quarterly, just so you know. Bye guys! <laughs>